Still with me in studio, Angus Hay, Chief Technology Officer at Neotel, Edwin Thompson, General Manager, Infrastructure and Technology at MTN Business, and Prines Pariachi, Chief Technology Officer at Internet Solutions. Gentlemen, let's get into the fun part of WAX. Angus, let us in on some of the technological innovations that, that this cable yeah. brings. I just wanted to put it in perspective. WAX is it's, it's not the first cable in Africa, obviously, but it's one of the first cables where, where we've seen African and South African engineers driving it. Um, the expertise that's gone into WAX was not coming out of primarily out of Europe, etc. Obviously, the supplier is a, is, is, a, is a European and US supplier, but a lot of the expertise that went into planning this was, was the players from these various countries. And, and there's some cutting edge technologies. We, we have a supplier that is delivering those cutting edge technologies, but we've worked very closely with them on the design. So some parts of WAX use 40 gigabit per second wavelengths and multiple wavelengths on there. So you know, pe people get a sense, 40 gigabits per second, that's you know, a few thousand times anything you can imagine actually getting as a broadband line. Um, and we have multiple wavelengths like that on the cable. And the other thing is we have uh, a technology called DWDM, which is the base technology for carrying that. And we're using a protocol called GMPLS, which, um, again, without the alphabet soup, basically <laughs> says that we're able to, 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 to build a very redundant system inside the cable. So let's say, for example, one of the branches breaks. We can work around that branch by switching the wavelengths. So we have optical switching technology, which means we can switch around the problems. Um, and, and, and that's you know, really impressive technology. And it's, it's, it's one of the first cables in the world. It's the first cable in the world to use GMPLS. And it's a cable landing in Africa. So I think we just we sometimes miss the point that these geeks in the back are, in the back are doing impressive stuff, but it really is cutting edge. Speaking of impressive, I mean that fibre optic line is so thin. Initially, a rollout of 500 uh, gigabits per second, and then a design capacity of 5.12 terabits per second. Are we going to see an increased rollout as demand increases for connectivity? Yes. Uh, what happens in these cable systems is generally. Uh, we roll out the cable system at at a specific um, capacity. In this case, as you say, it's just over um, 500 gigs. Um, and as the, the take up of the cable system occurs, it will then move towards its design capacity. Even that design capacity itself is uh, is probably going to be much lower than what the actual capacity is that we achieve. That's my next question. Is it realistic? Yes, it's realistic. Uh, that is a minim really a minimum that you would be able to get out of the cable system. The all indications at this point in time, as as we were saying earlier on, um, originally when the cable systems are designed, we only had 10 gigabit um, type of uh, technologies around. Now suddenly there's 40 gigs around, and there's 100 gigs coming along. Who knows? You know, once we can start putting the 100 gig type technologies onto the cable system, it's a massive leap. Uh, in terms of capacity on the system. Pranesh, another aspect, it's truly open access, the first on our continent. What does that mean to you? Uh, yeah, for us it means um, it gives us the ability to kind of be part of, of something that we weren't part of previously. So for us it's a great stride ahead in the, uh, tech, um, in the telco industry. Uh, it also gives us the ability to kind of expand our sort of horizons, it's not something we used to. Uh, it's, uh, it uh, kind of opens up stuff for us that we haven't had uh, previously. And I think it's really a testament that we actually, as a country, we are progressing from a telco perspective, if you look at how regulations changed over the years. Uh, so all of that, and I think it's just a matter of time before we start to get sort of broadband uh, throughout the country. These are the first steps of that. Uh, and I think it's allowed the experts in, in doing these types of projects to get out there, get it done, and then allow the rest of the country from a service provider perspective to use it. From a service provider perspective, the consortium, some would say a bit of a big boys club. What does this mean for everybody else and, and is that a fair reflection? Yeah. I, I think it's true to say that the uh, a consortium is certainly a group of operators investing together. However, the, the reasoning behind consortia is important. A consortium is often put together in order to make it possible to create something. So many of the players, and, and if you look up the, the, the West African coast, I can, we can look at countries, for example, um, investors from the DRC, we've got ACPT from the DRC, we've got Congo Tele from, Telecoms from Congo, um, we've got Togo Telecoms, and then a number of pl uh, players within the MTN group, you know, through their various countries that they, that they have operations. In, in a number of those cases, none of those investors would have been able to build a cable independently. It's necessary to pool capital in order to build these kind of things. They're simply too big for any one player, or even, even, a, even one country, to deploy. And I think that's really the secret. So um, in, in a sense, yes, there has to be a group that's investing. 
but the minimum investment level is relatively low and it's brought in players that have, that have enabled uh, you know, in whole countries to be connected that have not been connected before. Togo, DRC, I mentioned Republic of Congo, and even Namibia, which has never been connected directly to cable. And it's also assisting landlocked countries where on, which are not situated along the coastline such as Botswana. Yeah, some of the interesting uh, events in this specific cable system is Botswana has invested, which is a, a landlocked country. Uh, Botswana worked together with uh, Namibia, and collectively those two countries have, have uh, sorted out a situation where the, the, the dependency that Botswana would have on Namibia um, helps Namibia get access to the cable system, which is, is great. Let's look at the economic benefits of enhanced broadband. We know there's an indirect correlation between broadband connectivity and accessibility and GDP. Are we going to see those levels rise as we get the cables and they build up into Africa? I definitely think so. I think the cables allow us, opens up Africa to the rest of the world. It allows sort of greater collaboration between the African countries. I also think it if we do get prices to the levels where we want to, the South of African continent has made up a whole bunch of SMEs. This opens up the SME market and it, with the internet and online connectivity, the ability for people to trade uh, all over the world with sort of um, uh, robust connectivity, fast robust connectivity will help uh, with all of these. So definitely I think it's going to open up uh, a lot of opportunities for not just South Africa but the African continent. And a lot of collaboration opportunities with a mineral rich country like we have uh, or continent like we have, definitely lots of opportunities for us to collaborate as sort of the African continent rather than just South Africa or the SADC countries in South Africa. But Angus, we need the infrastructure. Base stations are one thing, but a lot of the African countries, our neighbours upwards, do not have the infrastructure like we do. Well, I think it's, it's two things. I mean, certainly there's no doubt that we've seen a mobile revolution. Um, so, you know, if, you, if I just take an example like Nigeria, which the MTN Great guys players will, be, for MTN, will, be, yes. will be familiar with. I mean, Nigeria is a massive mobile market, and yet, until now, it had essentially one very restricted access cable system, mm -hmm. which, which has caused all kinds of challenges for players wanting to enter that market. I think we're going to see some fairly dramatic shifts in, in countries like that, where, where, where it's not so much that the physical connections have changed. You know, it's 10 years since Sat3 landed there. But in those 10 years, we have not seen competitive international connectivity into Nigeria. Now we will. And, 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 and we know because you know, even ourselves and, and, and MTN will actively compete in delivering that connectivity. Um, but I think, so mobile, I think in many ways, the re revolution is there. I think what's, what's sad in a way is that we, we haven't yet seen the, if you like, the fixed line fiber revolution that we need to see. Um, more so for small businesses, more so for, for the corporate market. But we've got to see that because many of the applications for small businesses today depend on internet connectivity. They depend on those high speed, on that high speed access. So I think we're starting to see it in South Africa, but it's, um, we, we're not re really at that point where there's a, a massive tipping point. I think as people start to see the, 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 the benefits of bandwidth, as we start to see you know, tens of megabits per second to an end user on a, on, a, on a broadband connection, I think that's when you start to see the tipping point, when suddenly it becomes viable to, to start using the cloud for all of your business. Um, and, and I think, you know, end users, we talk often about fibre to the home, but I think we'll see it. There's no doubt we'll see it. Gentlemen, less than 60 seconds. Closing thoughts, each of you, hopes and aspirations for WAX. Let's start with you, Pinesh. Uh, hope and aspirations, I think, to get connectivity out there at a reasonable sort of rate and get it out there to the broader population rather than the high GDP areas in the country. Edwin. From an MTN perspective, this is a, a great opportunity. It's, it's now time that we can actually... Uh, bring the whole MTN community together. We've got organizations all over the African continent. This joins them. That's, that's wax for us. Angus, last thoughts. When, when I look at the graphs of our international capacity, it's a continuously steeply rising curve with exponential growth. What's really nice to do is to look at that graph next to the graph of all the live cables with all the capacity live on them. And we've got lots of green lights now. We have wide open pipes with adding wax as near to we've added about 25 percent to our internet backbone going out of the country so we have you know pipes that we need to fill now and uh, it, it, it's looking really good well we look forward to see how good it looks in a few months gentlemen thank you very much that's all we have for you on this month's edition of talco talk until next month from me natasha jacobs and my guests it's goodbye